Flamecraft. This is a game set in a fantasy town where humans and dragons coexist and work together in cute little shops. And I gotta tell you, the art of this game is out of this world, out of control, cute. It is just so nice. It's totally lovely. But when it comes to the illustrations of the dragons, the environment, the settings, the people that were there with the dragons, there's a lot of humor and funny references when it comes to these shops. Um, Hello Nursery, uh, the bakery, of course, is critical, rolls, get it? Um, it's just so nice. And some of the upgrades, again, a lot of humor there, as you can see in the Elspresso and Hobbicino that can be uh, added to the menu, the port of, of the potable potions. A lot of fun stuff. Uh, the mat also on which we're going to play and that we're going to use to organize components is, is a rollout mat, a single a single mat, and it's pretty long, yeah, so uh, you will want to have players sit on the long side so they can still get a sense. And the shops are added around the, the mat, so that means that no matter where, where you're sitting, some shops are going to be uh, face up and some face down, upside down, uh, and that's and that's the way it is. We have artisan dragons during the game. Players will play some of those from their hand, and the uh, and the point is to add them to shops that have a matching symbol. So cinnabon can be added to critical roles, for example. And these dragons, all the dragons of a, of a certain kind have the same symbol, have the same ability, have the same illustration, but they have unique names, which is a really cute touch. So we're gonna have these dragons, they're gonna come from our hand, and then also using game effects, we can acquire more from that supply, and uh, when one is taken, then another one comes from that deck. Here we have another deck, another deck of fancy dragons. These are used to score, and there are two kinds: the ones with the moon and the ones with the sun. The uh, sun ones can be scored during the game whenever the condition applies and whenever you want to trigger that scoring, whenever you think is most favorable. The the night ones are kept secret, the other ones also keep secret until revealed, but the night ones are kept secret until the end of the game, and they score only at the end of the game. And again, there will be game effects that will allow us to take fancy dragons into uh, under our protection. And here we have an area where we're going to place enchantments and basically upgrades. And that's one of the main elements of the game. You're going to collect resources so that then you can collect these enchantments and attach them to stores because that will score you victory points and give you other kinds of advantages. For example, if you're going to attach the Hobbicino to a store, uh, you need to discard sets of these two things, and depending on how many you discard, that is the number of victory points. And the victory points are hearts, because we all love each other deep down in this town, although it's a competitive game, so I want to love you more than you love me, and I still want to win. Uh, in order to uh, attach this card to a store, then I need to pay these resources, and I score these points, and I get a artisan dragon card. So... We have our dragons. We are dragons or dragon masters. It's unclear, but we have these lovely wooden dragons. And and uh, as I said, the main idea is you're collecting these resources uh, from the shops and from various cards, and then you're gonna spend them to acquire these enchantment scoring points. And the resources are represented by those tokens there. So we got bread, steak, uh, lettuce, uh, um, embols, uh, diamonds, and potions. And then we have coins, and coins are like wild resources. You can use a coin to pay for any cost that would be uh, paid for by any of those. The other way is not true, so when you have an ability that lets you take any one resource, you cannot take coins. Coins replace resources, but coins are not resources. It's like a Zen riddle. When it is your turn, 
uh, you will start your turn in a shop and with this your, when it is your turn you need to go to another one we really want to enjoy all the things that the town has to offer and so you must start your turn by moving your dragon to another shop it may be that as you go there Oh, hello, there's a friend there. If you go to a shop that already has dragons in it, you need to give a resource to each uh, player who has a dragon there. After you do so, you have a choice. You can gather in that shop or you can enchant in that shop. And you go through all of the steps and this, this player right here is very well done. First, you gain goods, uh, coins and dragon cards that are listed there. Meaning, for example, if I'm going there right now, then the only things that are the only things that they gather are two breads. So you see that icon there and that icon there. Uh, maybe later on, when that store has been enchanted, so it has had an enchantment added to it, now then going there would give me three of those um, three breads right now. It may also be the later dragons have been added, so now going there gives me more still. So first you gather whatever goods are there, and then you may place a dragon card. You may place a dragon card if the dragon card, the symbol, matches one of the symbols in one of the empty slots. As you can see, uh, some slots are taken, some are not. So those outlines, sort of like light brown, uh, indicate uh, the matching symbol. And the other color on the right, uh, the other symbol on the right, indicates the reward. So if I place a dragon there during my gather phase, I'm gonna uh, collect a coin. If I had a dragon matching that symbol and I was placing that dragon there, for example, I placed lovely flambe there, then the reward would be indicated by that symbol, which is one of these uh, fancy dragon cards that score more points at the end of the game or during the game. So remember, we were resolving the gathering phase. Yes, it has a number of steps. You collect goods, you may place a dragon, then you may fire up one of the dragons, meaning dragons have abilities there, and when you and you can use one of those, such as placing a dragon or drawing a dragon or a variety of other things. And of course, the dragons will tend to join shops in patterns, but then the potion wants their abilities to swap with dragons in town, so then the combination of dragons in the shops becomes more lively as when as these purple dragons start doing their things, they get all fired up. You may also use a shop ability if any. The shops that you see here on the board are the starting shops and they do not have special abilities, but then when a shop is entirely filled up, then another shop will come from a deck. Uh, the deck that you use is not going to be this deck. You will select the cards from this pool of cards here at the beginning of the game, but then from the deck that you will have then, you will draw new cards that are added to the to the top. It doesn't matter in which slot they're placed, as long as they're placed in, a, in an empty slot. And as you can see, these cards here, these upgraded non-starting shops, they do have abilities, and that's the ability that you will solve if you're gathering in that shop. And I'm also taking this opportunity, again, to show you the really unbearably adorable art it's just so good the only negative i have to say about this art is that now i want to go and live in that place so it makes me a bit sad that i can't just move there that's the only negative i can think of so gathering that's uh that's how you do it you do all of those steps and you can see you can collect a lot of stuff with a simple gathering action or after you reach a shop and you use and you possibly give gifts to dragons already there, you can enchant it again, in which case you choose one of the uh, you choose you choose an enchantment with a matching symbol. So right now it happens that that store doesn't have any. But if I had the right resources, three breads, two diamonds and and possibly and or possibly uh, coins to replace those. Then I'm in that shop and instead of gathering, I can enchant it. So I pay that cost, I gain that adventure, I enchant it. So now that is becoming more valuable. 
again you collect points from that and after you do so you may fire up any number of dragons right now there will be only one but suppose that later especially because of some switcheroos that happen with because of the funny purple dragons there are those abilities then when i enchant that shop i can use any and all of those that's pretty cool that's pretty neat so that's the idea is that simple move a dragon Move a dragon, uh, give gifts if need be, gather a lot of stuff or enchant the shop. As the shop get enchanted, people will want to enchant them because they that's how you scroll out of the three points. Then gathering becomes even more valuable. So the game kind of like accelerates as, as things progress. You continue like this until all the enchantments have been placed or until all of the... Uh, artisan dragons uh, have been drawn from that deck whichever happens first that triggers the end of the game and at the end of the game you score points and player with the highest score wins the game flamecraft is a really nice game it looks incredible this is one of the uh, most visually attractive games that I own because the subdued tone the sense of friendship the creativity the variety it's just beautiful. I love it. I love the way it looks. Uh, I love those wooden pieces such as the dragons. Um, I love all the art. Great. But then, of course, if I just want to look at good stuff, I can go to a museum. Uh, I also want the game to play well. And the game, well, the gameplay really mirrors the sense of calm and peace and friendliness of the art. It, for a competitive game, in which I still want to do better than you, um, there is a, a markedly relaxed and friendly atmosphere around the table. Because uh, I need that effect, so I'm going to give you stuff uh, when I visit the same shop. I'm going to score points, and that's going to make that shop even more valuable for people who stop there. And probably you're going to take advantage of that before I do, because I was there, I have to move somewhere else. So I'm going to make a shop better primarily or first and foremost that we first for other players then you have game effects uh, when you're scoring cards that will allow you to score points by gifting resources to other people so you want to do it all the time and that again is very friendly and at the same time works as a subtle and very effective rubber banding for me to score points using that effect, I'm literally reducing my resources, so my chances of scoring in the near future, and giving you better chances of enchanting something in the near future. Very nice, very smooth. And the variety of gameplay that you have uh, is incremented by the different shops that will come out every, every game. At the beginning, you always had the starting dragons and the same starting things, but then you will have different synergies and different things that come out. You know, when it comes to the enchantments, you have two separate decks, and so you're going to use only one of them uh, each game. So you will collect different sets of things uh, under slightly different rules. So again, more replay value. For a game that is that simple, just move a dragon, collect the resources, or basically spend resources to uh, enchant a shop and collect points, it, it has a remarkable, again, not just friendly atmosphere, but a remarkable amount of variety and different things so that, that can happen. Very nice there. Again, uh, the combination of the dragons that you fire up, uh, maybe you want to set up a shop before you enchant it so you can fire up a lot of different things. For a game this simple and definitely a family-friendly game from the point of view not just of the atmosphere but also the complexity, for a family-friendly game, I found that it had remarkable ways in which it incentivized and rewarded uh, good gameplay. Now, uh, one thing that I'll mention is the logistics of all the resources that are constantly moved around the table. Uh, it can feel a little bit, I don't say burdensome, but it's part of it. It slows down the game a little bit. Definitely, if you're playing with adults and children, you want one adult to be the banker, somebody who will efficiently say, "Okay, you need, okay, you need two leaves and an anvil and this thing and that thing, and you're giving me these things back because you're doing something else." Oh, that ability lets you do this and do that. You need an adult that, who efficiently does that, and even that. In the later phases of the game, well, you're gathering four of these and three of this and 
some, some, and this and that. So the gathering phase in the later phases of the game can become a little more cumbersome. Um, and that's why I played the game only with three players. Uh, that's the number I played. It was me and my two kids. And we liked it. And even then, the last couple of rounds, I'm like, well, I wish there was a simpler way for me to give you four of these and three of that and two of that. Oh, wait, that's like, it was one, not two. Um, and of course, then when a kid wants to take their turn back, you're like, nope, that's not happening. We're not, we, we're not gonna rewind all of that moving of things around. So there is that element there, which again, with two players, I think that's gonna be no problem at all, especially if you're playing it like play your spouse kind of situation or adult, one adult, a kid. With three players, again, sometimes there was a little bit of that, but we were having so much fun overall that that didn't ruin the experience. I don't think I wanna play the game with four, with four players because then I'm afraid that that's gonna slow down the game and just the management and logistics of resources is gonna make the game a little less fun. But in general, especially with three and I assume two players, this is a fun game. Fun, family-friendly, very smooth and nice gameplay. A lot of fun we have had with this one and we're definitely going to play more in the future. My kids and I, we definitely like Flamecraft.